So I'm out here at my hives doing some inspections today, checking to see how far along the bees are, uh, capping the fall honey and when I can plan on harvesting that. And I found something concerning. Um, it appears that one of my hives has received a mite bomb. Um, I've read about this on Randy Oliver's site, Scientific Beekeeping, and it makes a lot of sense to me. And it was something I was kind of watching out for, or at least aware of. Um, the only reason I found it is I run Freeman bottom boards. So it's an oil tray bottom board. And I changed the oil out a few days ago and cleaned the, cleaned the boards, put fresh oil in. And if you have a good eye, you can actually see mite fall in that oil. And I checked today and one hive has got tons and tons of mites. So my best guess is that the bees found a failing feral hive or maybe a kept hive somewhere and robbed it out and brought a lot of mites back with it. Um, this hive needs to get an emergency treatment or going into fall, they're gonna be really weak. So real quickly, I'll show you the, uh, the oil trays on a normal one and then what this one looks like. So this is how the Freeman works. You've got a tray underneath the hive that you can put oil in. And if you look closely, I already see a mite right there. And a mite right there. Hive beetle right there. Wax cappings. So I cleaned this oil five or six days ago. A couple mites in there I'm not really concerned about. Uh, this looks pretty clean. That's not too bad. That's what I would expect to see. This hive is actually my strongest hive, which makes sense that they would be the ones most prone to rob a smaller hive out. Let's take a look at these guys. Mite, 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 mite. They're everywhere. Mite, 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 mite. Just, they're, they're everywhere in here. It's incredible. Um, they have, they had to have gotten a mite bomb because I did a, a wash on these guys in August and I think they washed a zero. All right, so I'm back, I gathered some stuff and what I'm doing is I've got a fume board on this hive that received the mite bomb and I'm trying to push the bees out of this super. Uh, that super has got some wet honey in it, not capped yet, so it's not ready to harvest. And that means that what I can do is I can take this super and put it on this strong hive and they will finish it out, uh, finish the drying and then cap it and I'll be able to harvest it. That allows me to treat this hive today. Um, I can't treat this hive with a honey super on with oxalic acid. Now, I'm using a fume board to push the bees out because I do not want to move bees from a mite bomb hive into a good hive that has no problems. Uh, when I popped the lid on this one, I looked at the underside of the lid and actually saw a phoretic mite on top of a bee's back. And that means they've got a bad problem. Uh, that's if you're, if you're physically seeing mites on your bees, you've got a lot of mites. Um, 70 to 80% of the mites are gonna be in capped brood, and the ones that are not are usually lodged under the scale plates on the, the belly of the bee. Um, it's just when they're looking for a new meal that they will climb up on the bee's back. So if you're seeing mites on your bees, you've got a lot of mites. So this should uh, take just a few more minutes I'll pop that super off, blow the rest of the bees out, make sure I don't transfer any, get it on here, and then I'll seal it back up and be able to treat.
that bee right there has a mite. That's a forager bee. And when you're seeing mites on the backs of forager bees, you have a mite problem. They like to stay down in the brood nest on the nurse bees. So this is just more confirmation that uh, these guys have probably been out partying a little too hard, robbing out a failed hive, and they brought back a communicable disease. Safety first. Oxalic acid is bad stuff. So I'm using a Verox wand, which I like pretty well. You have to work the hive from the front, and the procedure is you uh, put it in the front, cover the entrance with a towel, hook it up to a battery for two and a half minutes, and then unhook it from the battery, leave it in the hive for two and a half minutes, and that allows all of the oxalic acid vapor to vaporize. And then you take the wand out, leave the towel covering the entrance for 10 minutes and that lets it permeate the hive and kill mites. Well, when I took the wand out of the hive, I nearly had a heart attack because there were two bees in it. And one of them is undersized. I don't know if that's deformed wing virus or what, but that I thought was my queen and the more I look I don't think it is I think it just freaked me out because this one was so small I've got a marked queen in here from this past year and I think that's a drone that, that is a drone I can see the eyes but it nearly gave me a heart attack I thought I had a dead queen Ugh. beekeeping highs and lows folks Ten minutes is up, so open sesame. Oh, look at all that pollen. All right, so. I treated with oxalic acid this hive that received the mite bomb. I also cleaned out the oil tray and put fresh oil in there that will allow me to come back in about three days or so and monitor and see what my mite drop looks like. Um, I'll try to include that on this video uh, if I don't forget. And they will get at least two or three more rounds um, just because of the amount of mites that I'm seeing in this hive. Um, I don't like treating one hive. I would rather treat the whole yard, but we've had a really, really strong fall flow this year. And I'm anticipating pulling about a hundred pounds of honey, um, which is tremendous in fall. And uh, it's not capped yet, not all capped. It's partially, and it needs about two weeks, but I did not want to wait two weeks on this hive because they were, the mite counts were just gonna be so high on them. I, I didn't want to wait that long on them. Um, so after I pull honey, I'll probably do another round uh, just in case I get any drift or uh, migration of the mites from this hive into the other ones. I want to go into winter as clean as I can possibly get. So it's the next day. I'm like a kid on Christmas, I guess. I couldn't wait. Uh, I wanted to see what the mite drop looked like today. Um, I know that it can take up to about 72 hours, three days for OAV to really work well. So I'm really curious to see what this looks like. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> wow. All of those dots are dead mites. Gives you an idea of how many are in there. This hive would have been in trouble. A lot of activity. Late afternoon, third, three days have passed. So we'll get an idea of what the mite drop looks like. Wow. There's rafts of dead mites. I would like to do a follow-up treatment today, but I do not have time. So I'll have to do that tomorrow. I'll clean this oil out. And that'll give me an idea of how many mites there are under cappings. So I did a second round of oxalic acid vapor on day four, which was yesterday. Uh, today is day five, and I'm going to check for mite drop, and that hopefully will tell me something. One day after the second treatment, <laughs> this tells me I had quite a few mites under cappings, meaning that a hive was fairly infested. There are not as many as there were the first time, but that's still way too many. So with that many mites being under the cappings, um, it may give me an indication of when they received this mite bomb, when the problem really got bad. Uh, it tells me that they've been here for a while, long enough to get under the cappings. Um, that also tells me that my winter bees may be weaker than I would like for them to be. And this hive could be at risk of failure over winter. So the only thing I can do for them is to clean up the mites and make sure they've got plenty of feed. Um, it also makes me question the genetics of this hive. Uh, this queen has a big strike against her already, uh, and that is she is the only one in my apiary that has a high mite load at this point in the year. If it is because of a mite bomb and they, uh, they did rob out a failed hive and brought them all back, that's not really her fault, um, but when in doubt, blame the queen. So I don't know that I will be propagating her genetics if there's a, you know, a good queen a couple of hives down that doesn't have mite problems, I'll probably choose to propagate those genetics. So from here on, my, my plan is probably to do a total of six treatments at four day intervals. Uh, that will give me a 24 day cycle, uh, which would kill mites even in drone brood, which they should not have drone brood this time of year. It's um, early October. Um, that should get them cleaned up enough, and then I'll make sure that they've got plenty of stores for winter and just hope they make it. So again, this is something that you need to watch out for. Just because you treated in July or August, you had low mite loads, does not mean that it stayed that way. Uh, you could have an explosion of mites by September or October, and you don't know about it unless you check. So this is something you definitely need to watch out for and you need to know how to deal with it if, it, if you do find that it has happened. I appreciate you watching the video. Uh, if you would do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button for this video. 
Those are the two best ways that you can help me and my channel and my family and help other people find this video if you think it's useful. So I'd really appreciate you doing that. And uh, until next time.